Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade Edge TX 2.7.1 or earlier to the newly released Edge TX 2.8. Before we go any further, I want to show you how to back up the SD card contents of your radio. And the reason we do that is because if there's any kind of problem during the process, by having a backup, you have an easy method to revert and go back to where you were when you started. We're going to conduct that process by connecting the USB-C cable from your computer to your radio. Just plug it in here on the top port. And once you've done that, you'll be presented with an option to use USB joystick, storage, or serial. We're going to use the jog dial and scroll down to storage and select storage. Once we've done that, we'll have a pop-up on our desktop computer that'll bring a couple of windows up. The first one is a firmware window. We don't care about that. The second one is your SD card contents. Now we want to make a folder somewhere on the computer that we can put our SD card contents from the radio. So I'll create a new folder by clicking on my desktop and then clicking new folder. And I'm just going to type SD card backup. And then I'm going to drag the contents from the SD card on the radio into that folder. It only takes a minute to do this, and it's totally worth the effort because if you ever have to go backwards, it's very easy to do that. All you have to do is flash your original firmware and then take this SD card backup that you're making and drop it on your radio. That's all you have to do. Now with our backup complete, we can proceed with flashing. I'll disconnect the USB cable from the radio and I just want to show you what's on this radio so you know where we're starting. I'm going to press the system button and then I'll press the information screen and you can see under the version string right here, this is 2.7.1. The next thing I'll show you are my models. I just want you to know that there are a lot of models on this setup and I'm not going to lose any of them in the conversion. People ask that question quite a bit. So I've got my 3D planes, I've got my sport planes, my warbirds, all kinds of different models on this radio all set up and they'll be there when we're done with the process. With our SD card backed up, the next thing we'll do is prepare the radio for the flash process. And there are really two things that have to happen here. The first one is we need to put software on the SD card inside the radio so that we can flash it and update it. The second thing we need to do is fl actually flash the radio. So just by putting software on the SD card, you're not actually updating the radio firmware. You have to flash it. I'll show you both of those steps next. We're going to start by putting software on the SD card, and I'm going to do that in bootloader mode. You can do that while the radio is powered up and, and mounting the SD card, but in case you didn't know, you can also do it in bootloader mode, so I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to turn the radio off, and then I'm going to hold T4 and T1 inboard. We push these two switches in, and then with them pushed in, we press the power button until we see the screen flash, and then we let go, and we're now in bootloader mode. That's all we have to do in terms of pressing the buttons. The next thing we'll do is connect the USB-C cable to the top port of the radio, like that. And then the bootloader will recognize that USB is connected and it will mount those drives on your computer. So on my computer, I've got two windows now. This one that says firmware.bin and firmware.txt. We don't need that one. Close that. That's not useful to us right now. The second window that we have is our SD card contents. That's the one we're interested in. I'm just going to set that aside for the moment. The next thing we'll need to do is go to the Edge TX GitHub. I'll have links for the GitHub in the description so you don't have to worry about that. And then once you get to the GitHub, you're going to scroll down to the Edge TX project and click on that. And then scroll down here on the right hand side under releases, you'll see Edge TX Flying Dutchman. I'll click on that link and that will bring us to the firmware and companion for 2.8. Now it is imperative if you use companion to upgrade to 2.8. Do not try and use 2.7.1 companion on a 2.8 radio. It will create problems for you. In my case, I'm running Windows, so I'll grab the Windows 64-bit version, and then I'll also click on the firmware and download that. Now, they also provide Windows 32-bit, Mac, and Linux versions of Companion if you need those. So those two pieces of software are now over here on my desktop right here. I've got one archive, that's Companion, and here's the firmware. The next thing we'll do is go back to the project, and we'll scroll down and look for sound card information. So here are the Edge TX SD card sounds. We'll click on that link, and then over here on the right, you'll notice that it says Edge TX Flying Dutchman, which means they updated the sound pack for 2.8. And here's a list of changes in case you're interested in what they did. But I'm going to just go down to the bottom, and I'll select EN 2.8.0. That is Irene. They've also added some other voices like Libby and Ryan and Guy and Michelle and Sarah if you want those. 
So now we've got our sound pack. The next thing that we'll do is go back to the main project page and look for SD card contents. Now I'm gonna click on this project and I wanna show you something down here at the bottom. They've renamed the packages here. So at the bottom, they describe what the file names mean. In my case, I'm running a TX16S, so I need the 480 by 272 package. If you're running, say, a FlySky Nirvana NV14, you'll need the 320 by 480. And if you're running something like a X9D or TX12 Mark II, you'll need one of these packages down here on the bottom. So pay attention to the file name that you need. Again, in my case, I need 480 by 272. So I'll go back up to releases and click on that. And I'll scroll down to the bottom and I will grab 480 by 272. Those are the SD card contents for a TX16S. Next on the project page, we'll scroll down and we'll look for themes. I'm gonna grab those as well. And I'll just scroll down and grab the latest themes package. And we'll just do the themes.zip file. Okay, that's pretty much it for Edge TX. Now, if you have a multi-protocol module radio like I do in my TX16S, I have a four in one module. We also need to upgrade the MPM. It's a good idea when you upgrade firmware to make sure your MPM is updated as well. Sometimes they have features that rely on each other. So it's a good idea just to keep them up to date. I have a link for the MPM download in the description as well. On the left-hand side, select your radio and the right-hand side, select the version that you want. In this case, as of this video, 1.3.3.2 is the latest. The module type is STM32 4 and one The radio type is Serial OpenTX Edge TX. And then channel order, I like AETR. And then that will present me with a binary down here at the bottom. I will grab that. And I'll also grab the multi Lua scripts. You don't need the multi dot text unless you're flying an Ersky radio. That's for different radios for not necessary for OpenTX or EdgeTX. Okay, that's all the software we need. Now let's put the browser away and we'll start opening those software packages up and putting them on our SD card. Remember, all we're doing at this point is copying software to the card. We're not actually flashing anything yet. So I'll start out with the firmware first. Remember this one's companion. We'll set that one off to the side. We'll do that last, but I'm going to start with the firmware first. I'm going to open this archive and inside that package, there's a bunch of different binary files. Look for the one that's appropriate to your radio. In my case, it's TX 16 S. So I'm going to drag that and drop it right here in the firmware folder. You also want to make note of that file name. It is F six Delta one four zero E. I'd really like it if the Edge TX developers figured out a way to make that simpler for humans to read. <laughs> okay, so we've got the firmware. We dropped it in our firmware folder. We can now delete that archive. We no longer need it, so delete it. I like to delete them. That way I keep track of what's been done and what hasn't been done. Next thing I'll do is open the SD card sounds archive. And notice in this archive, we have one folder only called sounds. I'm just gonna drag that over to my SD card and let it rip. Also make note, I'm dropping these items in the root of the SD card, which is the base. I'm not dropping them inside widgets or themes. If you do that, it won't work. You have to drop it in the root of the SD card, which means the base directory. It's the drive letter only. If you see something else in your path up here, that's not the right place to be. It should just say the label of your drive and the drive letter, and that's it. During the copy process for sounds or contents, if you get any messages from Windows saying, hey, these files already exist, just click on the button that says replace. It's okay. We're just overriding old data with new data. So it's okay to do that. Don't sweat it. I didn't have that issue because while I've been testing, I erased my sounds folder. The next thing we'll do is delete that SD card sounds archive. We'll get rid of that. So we know we've already done it. Next up is the SD card contents themselves. So we'll open that up. Notice there's a big file structure here. That's okay. We're just gonna highlight everything we see in this archive and we're gonna drag all of it over and drop it right here in the base of our SD card. Just let it go. And you're gonna definitely get an error message saying, hey, some of this stuff exists. What would you like to do? We're just gonna say replace. Replace the files in the destination. Just click on that, it's all good. That just means you have updated software. Okay, that's it for the SD card contents. We'll delete that archive and then we'll open up themes. And then in the themes archive, we've got one folder called themes. I'm just gonna drop that right here in the root of the SD card. Probably gonna get an error message about these as well. That's okay. Good idea to update the themes archive because that gives you access to all the latest themes that all the community members donate to the project. I even have a couple in there. 
Same deal, just hit replace. If you see a message come up informing you of a conflict, we'll just hit replace. And we can delete the themes archive now. Next, we've got our multi-protocol binary. This is not an archive, it's in a binary format. So I'm gonna drop this one in a specific folder. This one's important. We're gonna drop this one in the firmware folder. See how that firmware folder is highlighted? I'm gonna let it go in there. That puts the multi-protocol module firmware binary in the firmware folder. We will delete that now. And then finally, we've got our multi Lua scripts. So we'll open that archive and we see a folder called scripts. We'll just drop that in the base of our SD card as well. We'll let that go. We get an error message saying, hey, would you like to replace these files? Click replace. Now we can delete that archive. The last thing to do is to install Edge TX Companion. This one doesn't actually install anything on the radio. It just installs to your computer. So we'll open that archive and run the executable. Windows might present you with some kind of error. Right now I can't reach their stupid smart screen service, so it took a long time for this to pop up, but whatever, just click on run and install it. So I'll click on run and go through the install process, agree to the terms, hit next, install for EdgeTX Companion 2.8, current user or all user, up to you, click install, and this will finish up the install process for Companion. And then we can launch it once that's done, just to make sure everything worked. And here we go, a nice fresh install of Companion 2.8, which I know will work with this radio. Okay, so far we've copied software to the radio and we've installed Companion, but we haven't flashed anything yet. We have not flashed the firmware and we have not flashed the NPM. That's next. Back on the radio, we'll remove the USB-C cable from the top of the radio. With the USB cable disconnected, we'll have the option now to write the firmware. So I'll press enter on the jog dial and we'll scroll down. Now your firmware list might look different than mine. Don't worry about that. We're just looking for one particular file. That's the one I mentioned earlier to remember the file name. It is Frank 6 Delta 140E. So once you've got that one, you can click on it and the radio will confirm the version number for you before you flash it. So this is version 2.8.0. That's the correct one. So now I'm gonna long press the jog dial and that will start the write process. Once the write process is complete, this bar will turn green and we can exit the bootloader and wrap it up. Writing is now complete. This radio now has Edge TX 2.8 as its firmware. So we'll back out by pressing the return button and then we'll just exit the bootloader. Now that the radio is booted up, we'll press the system button and go over to the information screen and verify that we've got version 2.8.0 and we do. The last thing to do in terms of flashing is to upgrade our MPM. We'll do that by pressing the SD card icon and then opening the firmware folder and looking for the latest multi-protocol module binary. That is 1.3.3.2. I'll highlight that and then press the jog dial. That gives me a little pop-up to flash the internal multi. It doesn't matter if the multi-module is selected for your current model or not. The flash process will turn the module on, flash, and then shut it off. So you don't have to worry about that. Flash successful, you gotta see that. And once you see that, you know you've updated your multi-protocol module and you can press the return button. In order to verify our multi-protocol module is updated, we need to turn it on. So we'll press on the model button and then scroll down to internal RF, and I'm just gonna turn the module on multi. It doesn't matter what protocol it uses, we're just verifying the firmware. So we'll back out of that, and then we'll hit the system button again, hit the information screen, and then modules RX version, and we should see multi-module 1.3.3.2. That means we've definitely updated our firmware on the multi-module. Now, before I turn you loose on Edge TX 2.8, I do wanna share one thing that's gonna be probably new to you, and that's when you long press on the model button, you're gonna be greeted with a very different model select screen than what you're used to on prior versions of Edge. This one is about using labels. So the idea is that you can go in and create a label. So I'll hit new, and I'm gonna create a label called Helis, for example. So I'll just type in H-E-L-I-S, and then put a check there, and then I'll hit save. And once I've done that, now I've got a label called Helis. I can go back to my unlabeled, and I'm gonna just choose this little helicopter here, I'll press the screen one time and then press it again. That brings up a little pop-up 
I'll hit edit labels and I'll assign that to my helis category. And that way, when I click on the helis label, I can see I've got my helicopter. I'm going to do one more for you real quick. I'll hit new and we'll type 3D planes. We'll just do a 3D plane one. 3D uh, planes, P-L-A-N-E-S. I'll hit a check there. I'll hit save. And then I'll hit unlabeled again to go back to the planes that are not already characterized or labeled and I'll look for a 3D plane. There's one. There's the Edge 540. So I'll press the screen one time. I'll press it again and I'll hit edit labels and I'll put it in 3D planes. And then I'll do the same thing with my other plane that I saw down here, the extra 300. I'll click that one time, click it again, edit labels and put 3D planes down as the option. And that way, now I can go back anytime and say, I just want to see my 3D planes or I want to see my helicopters. Now notice there are the ability to include two check marks, right? So I have 3D planes and helis checked. I don't have any aircraft that are both a heli and a 3D plane, so we see nothing. And I can unfilter by clicking a label and taking that check mark off, and now I just see helicopter. So another thing you can do, by the way, on that note, is add a second label. So I'll click my extra 300 and click it again. I'll hit edit labels and I'll add favorites. So once I've done that, now my extra 300 will show up if I apply the 3D planes label or if I apply the favorites label. Either one will cause that plane to show up. You can also, on the left-hand side, you can edit the labels. You can long click and delete a label. You can move it. You can sort your label with these two buttons down here on the left, and you create a new model by pressing the new model button. So it is a little bit different than what you're used to, but just spend a few minutes working with it and you'll get it. That wraps up my video on how to flash Edge TX version 2.8.0 over 2.7.1 or earlier. I just want to say thanks again to the Edge TX team. You guys are amazing. This is an awesome update. I know it was a heavy lift, so congratulations on getting 2.8.0 out the door. Thank you very much for your contributions to the community. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.